Hey, what's up YouTube? We are back working on getting this plasma table set up. In the last video, I basically assembled the entire table and we got the axes to move back and forth and around. Um, but that's kind of the bare minimum that we needed to do to get it to turn on and at least look like it's working. Um, there's a lot of wiring that I still have to do in order to get uh, the table to communicate with the actual plasma cutter that I have. Um, also, I have this box here, which is an add-on to the kit, which is called a torch height controller. Um, so this is an extra piece that you can buy to kind of upgrade your setup. And what that does is when you first run your program, the Z-axis has a initial height sensing um, feature where it will go down, touch the metal, and then back off a specified amount. And that will be your cutting height throughout your entire cut. Let's say if you have a big piece of metal, it's gonna maintain that height across the entire cut. However, if you have a warped piece of metal or a piece of metal that has you know, a not perfectly flat surface, um, if it does the initial height sensing over here and it works all the way over here and it's not flat, um, your distance is gonna be different. And it could be dramatically different to where your torch is too close. It could be dragging on the metal or it could be too far away and it's causing really bad cut quality or might not even cut at all. It just depends on how wavy your surface is, etc. And so that's where this piece comes in. It can actually monitor the voltage coming out of your plasma cutter to maintain a set height across your entire sheet of metal, um, whether it is bowed or it's like ribbed and it's going to maintain that height. So should cause for better cuts, uh, more consistent and accurate cuts, etc. And so what that's what this box does. It was a couple hundred extra bucks, uh, but I just wanted to opt for that just to you know make the machine a bit more precise as long as we can get it wired in and working correctly. So we'll be doing that. The other thing is the plasma cutter needs to know what uh, outputs or the Langmuir box needs to know how to control the plasma cutter. And that's what this port does. So I actually have to solder some wires to the back of this port and that goes into the back of the plasma, routes down to the box on the side of the table and then the plasma can talk with the Langmuir box. So I had originally planned to put the plasma cutter under the table, um, but it turns out it fits really nice on the wall right there. And I can run the electrical to the plasma and then the outputs of the plasma can be nicely routed down to the table. And I don't have to worry about like water splashing off the table uh, if it was under the table and you know spillage and things like that. So we're gonna go back in time. I'm gonna show you a little build on that shelf and then going to jump into doing some of the wiring.
Well, as you saw, I got the four wires I needed soldered to the back of this CNC port. Uh, I've never soldered something so precise um, and it wasn't too bad. There are two really thin wires and those were really easy because the rubber sheathing on them was small and the wires were small. So it was like really instant to heat up the solder and then solder it to the like uh, um, connection here. So that went really fast for those two. But then there's these white ones that are kind of a thicker gauge uh, wire. And those took a bit longer to heat up and actually melt against, you know, these soldering points in here. And I kept having trouble and second guessing myself and trying to make sure I did a good job soldering it. Um, so that took a little bit longer, but overall it really wasn't too bad. Uh, luckily I have my friend's help. He loaned me his uh, soldering gun. So I had a really fine tip on this, uh, this end. Uh, my, my original soldering gun has a really fat end on it. So I needed something a bit more precise. So luckily my friend came in. Thanks, Joseph. But otherwise I just had it written out here. What pins ne needed to be soldered. Um, the pin four and six corresponded to the red and black wires. Those are for the torch height controller. And this is uh, specific to the uh, prime weld cut 60. And then the whites could be one and two or one or two. So it didn't matter which one, but the uh, THC wires were specific, um, positive and negative wise. Now I'm going to get this THC box mounted up somewhere. It has to be kind of close to where the plasma cutter is just because one of these wires is pretty short. So it'll be mounted up there somewhere and I will go ahead and uh, think of a spot, get it mounted up and I'll touch back with you in a minute. Got the box mounted up there with just some Velcro that they supplied. And these are the two wires that I need to run to the control box. One is for the torch height controller, and then one is for the on and off. So these essentially are the four wires that I solder to the back of that plug. Two wires coming from this one and two wires coming from this one. So on and off for the torch and then torch height control. As if uh, I don't think I explained that very clearly earlier. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is start prepping the Z axis to mount my machine torch. What we have to do though is get a bracket to mount it to the Z axis. They have a bracket that comes with it and you would normally mount your uh, handheld torch in here and you clamp it down. Um, they sell their own bracketry to get a machine torch to mount to work with it. However, there is a design on Thingiverse that I like. So we're gonna go up and get that printed out and we'll get that installed on the Z-axis. So that piece that came right off the printer, we've got that installed and I've got the machine torch installed. It works pretty good. I do need a bit longer bolts. I think for my own peace of mind, um, they don't thread too far in. I'd like to get some longer ones, but uh, they do hold tight for now. And the mount worked great. So I have no complaints with that. I appreciate someone uh, who made it for the first time and posted, up, posted it to Thingiverse. So that helped me out quite a bit. I've been doing some cable management. I had some wire loom for usually car applications and I had some left over. So I ran those wires into the wire loom all the way back. Um, we've got the machine torch hooked into the plasma now. The excess coiled up under here. We'll get another couple zip ties and it should sit pretty good. Um, the wires that come from the torch high controller and the on and off uh, switch or wire, I've got that in loom too. Got it brought it over here. Tried to keep it all tidy. Uh, this wire can't go into a loom just because this needs to go back and forth. But uh, just trying to tidy up the wires as best as we can. And this is just a power wire. Like I said, it's kind of temporary until it gets put back into its spot. So with the machine torch installed and plugged into the plasma, uh, all I need to do is attach the ground clamp. And this table is effectively ready to make its first cut. Uh, I've already got an idea for what its first cut is going to be. Uh, it's going to be cutting itself. <laughs> I need to cut out the drain hole 
and I need to make it bigger for the uh, drains that I want to run. So I'm gonna have another video on the drainage and the filling system. You can probably see some of the material on the table, um, but I need to make those bigger to run the drain. I'm gonna get this area cleaned up quite a bit. I'm going to write up a program to cut out a circle, uh, which is gonna take a bit of time to set it up for the first time with all the settings and things like that, um, speeds and uh, amperage and stuff. So I will meet back up with you whenever we are ready to get this material cut. Whew, a lot of anxiety running through the veins right now, but I've got the hole uh, drawn out on Fusion, got it exported. I had to set up a, a cutting profile. I've never really done that before. Uh, there's just a lot, of, a lot of unknowns about you know setting amperages. PSI is pretty easy, but um, just a lot of things I'm learning how to do still. And I've just done a couple dry runs just in the, out in the middle of the table and it looks pretty good. So I'm going to kind of jog it over to my zero, which is the center of that hole and do another dry run. And then we'll be doing our first actual cut. got no fire. I am still determined. Take number four. Here we go. go I'm so happy those look really good oh they look so good I know they're just holes but that was a lot of anxiety and they turned out so nice for the first cut no issues it could have went terribly wrong but it went really good the issue the entire time was if you've noticed I moved my ground clamp and that literally was the issue what was weird though is I tried the hand torch. So I went and got the actual hand torch. I had the ground clamp still right here. I took the hand torch and I fired it right there and it fired. So that told me it eliminated the ground, tor the ground clamp. So I don't know, but it, it works now with the ground, you know, being here, I guess this, was still coated, I guess, but like where I TIG welded it, it's kind of like bare metal. And that's why I tried it. Cause I was like, well, let me just try the ground clamp. I put it there and we're cutting. So typically you would uh, put your ground clamp on the slats that go up and down that your workpiece sets on. So, you know, that's not a typical ground spot location, but oh, I'm so happy. That was uh, not a big issue. I was like looking over my wiring. I took the plug off the back three times. I was looking over everything, reading forums, but we got it figured out and we finally have the holes cut and the first cuts on the plasma cutting table. Well, there you have it. We got our first cut done with the plasma cutting table, all the wiring and all the other things that I've done in this video to get up to this point and it worked really good. We've got a bit more work to do, such as getting the drainage done for the water table well, we are very close to actually being, being able to go pick up some uh, uh, steel sheets and start making stuff with it. So I'm awfully happy. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.